Well, first off, I, I definitely want to dive into the uh, the ballroom dancing, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, but uh, you are from India, as we established, and you're, you're an international student. How long have you been in the United States? I've been around about 14 months. Okay. and So I came as a spring 2012 admit, and I've been here since roughly December 2011. So. And how long is that program with Keck? Uh, the program is for two years, but I'm trying to graduate early, so I've been taking more courses every semester. I've been trying to take around 12 to 14 credits every semester to try and graduate early, so within um, one and a half years, so within three semesters. Very nice. So science is exciting. I know we probably, <laughs> molecular <laughs> biology and all that good stuff is, is definitely fascinating, but I think what makes you an interesting character is that you kind of diversify your college experience by dancing. And dancing all over the place. You're telling me about ballroom dance. You're in different divisions. All these you know, Latin dance and fox trots. And tell me about this. Uh, all right. What do you want to involved So in? we've got a wonderful, wonderful team at USC. It's called the USC Ballroom. Uh, for anyone who wants to know more about it, can even check out our pages at facebook.com/usc-ballroom. So uh, we meet up on Mondays for Latin Ballroom, on Wednesdays for Smooth, and on Fridays we do practice. Uh, besides that, we go in for our competitions. So we're going to Berkeley, we are going to UC San Diego, Claremont, Cal Poly, all these places, and we compete. It's really great fun. And round about twice or thrice a semester, we go for socials. So like on the 14th of February, uh, we had a vintage Valentine's Ball at Claremont, for which all the people from USC were invited. And it was like really great fun. Okay. And, and you say that, uh, like, is this... How how many hours a week would you say you dedicate to ballroom dance? Um, that's roughly, uh, depends you whether you're just doing it socially as a newcomer or whether you plan to compete. Both way, it's a lot of fun. If you're doing it socially, you can just come in like once on one hour on Monday, one hour on Wednesday, and one hour for Friday practices. Uh, if you're competing, you'd probably have to put in a lot more time. Now, you are competing, I believe, yes. correct? So um, you're putting in a lot of time. Yes, I'm competing in salsa, uh, foxtrot, cha-cha-cha, rumba, samba, and smooth walls. Wow. And how long have you been dancing? Well, I've been dancing a long time, uh, but previously I just used to do a bit of jazz and Bollywood, since obviously I come from Bombay, so... Uh, Bollywood's kind of very inherent with us, but I've been uh, doing ballroom since I've come to USC. That's outstanding. And like I said, I mean, it, 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 it's a huge diversion, I suppose. It's incredibly different than, than science. You know what I mean? But the science of dancing, I'm sure, is, is definitely evident <laughs> with all that. But it's, uh, it's, it's like, you know, two different worlds. Yes. Am I wrong about that? No, you're not completely wrong, but that's a part of me. Uh, I, uh, for people who don't know, I even write a blog, which... It's called Lost in Transition. And you like to travel a lot. Yes, I love to travel a lot. Okay. And so photography, travel is a part of my interest. And Lost in Transition is the blog. So people can check it out, coffeesandconversation.blogspot.com. And you'll find all stories from different travel adventures, short stories, movie reviews, um, to a lot of everyday stuff. And I personally believe that just because you are from one field does not mean that you should not be able to do other things. So, for example, I've always loved to act, to dance, to write. But at the same time, I equally love science. So I'm doing science for the time being and probably I'm going to switch to dance or maybe to becoming a full-time writer a few years down the line. Now we have a shout out to uh, Professor Mark Moore, previous Comrades Corner guest, and telling you off air about this guy where he's an economics professor, uh, loves numbers and things like that. And of course, well, I didn't turn that thing on. Our little money button, of course, isn't working right now, but money's a big deal. But he's also big with professional acting. And he had it as his own uh, one-man play, Crooked Roads, and stuff like that. So uh, he tries to inspire students like you, I suppose, uh, to, you know what, maybe you can have more than a couple dreams or more well, than definitely. one dream and, and pursue all of them, which is what you plan on doing. You're not going to necessarily sort of corner yourself and, and settle down in, in one field. You want to do science. You want to act. You want to dance. You want to have a good time. And you're a very creative person. I think that's where this comes from. Yes. And um, the writing, so, of course. Yeah. Plus, at the same time, USC, of course, gives us a lot of freedom in the things we do. And uh, as a part of my work, I work at the USC Cancer Hospital, where we're doing clinical trials for drugs. So at the same time, it gives us immense satisfaction when we're trying to help the patients, trying to cure them of the cancer, and that the joy that we see on them. It's, at the end of the day, about how happy you feel. At the same time, uh, you're not missing out on anything. As they say, you know, being too unambitious is not so good because you don't know where to go. But being overambitious is not so good either because 
then you might just lose out your virtual life versus your real life. Well, you do have to sometimes worry about moolah. But uh, oh. <laughs> in this case, it is working right now. I got the button correct. But, I mean, ballroom dance and stuff like that, I think, is an excellent example of you really sort of spreading your wings. And I do want to ask another question because there's a lot of folks who uh, ballroom dance is something that they want to get into. And some people have the misconception that, well, I'm sure there's a lot of pretty girls with ballroom dancing. That's Definitely. not a misconception. That's very true. But you claim that uh, relationships are very, very rare beyond friendship in, in the program. Definitely. Because when you're dancing with someone, it's really different. I know people who come out there for a few of these dances, and some of the dances are really intimate. And many of them kind of get really scared with the kind of intimacy, because here it's not about a hookup, or as soon as you're going to be talking in some time about the USC hookup <laughs> page. <laughs> I can't wait uh, for that story. <laughs> uh, but this one's more about being more professional and trying to tell a story through your dance. And, you know, if you're kind of in a relationship and everything, or if you're trying to hook up with someone, it kind of messes up with the intimacy and everything. And you might just mess up the whole performance, which is not what you want. So when we are dancing, the dances might be really intimate. But that's like the art of dance, you know, uh, how to dance intimate without really getting involved. Exactly. So tell me about uh, India real quick. I know that you love to travel. Something that I do want to take a look at is that you claim... And I'm not second guessing this. Never been to mm -hmm. India, but uh, you, it says here that you said you have 26 official languages Pretty in much. that country. Plus, minus two, three. But yeah, we have those many official languages. So what uh, are they? Give me a couple examples. All right. So I speak four of them. Uh, four Is Indian English languages. One of them? English. Yeah. Oh, besides English, course, I speak yeah. four of them. I see. Because uh, <laughs> that really happens is when I come here and I used to tell people that I can talk English as well as Spanish, and they used to go like, "Wow, okay, you can talk two languages." And I tell them that <laughs> besides the four languages uh, which I talk from India, so that brings my total to six languages. And then they just gape at you and I get the same reaction as much as you're giving me. So what happens is Hindi is kind of the national language, but we're taught everything in English. So I was just having this conversation uh, with a friend of mine where he says that he's proficient in English. And I'm like, that thought never crosses my mind because for us, we don't learn English as a language. For us, English is a medium through which we are taught everything. Your science, history, geography, they're not taught to you in your native languages. You are taught everything in English. Um, so that's English and Hindi that we are proficient with and every state. So the state that I'm staying in is Maharashtra. So I speak Marathi. And plus, ancestrally, I come from another state. Um, if you like trace back maybe three, four generations back. So in my home, I still talk the ancestral language, which is Gujarati, which is from the neighboring state Gujarat. And then there are a few other states um, that have like different languages, uh, like Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati kind of have similar scripts. So you can kind of understand, which is we were just having a talk about that on how different these languages are. But if I go down south, the scripts are changed. It's not like, you know, all the languages are different, but they use the same English script, you know, like French, Italian, Spanish, everything. Here the scripts are changed. Changing. Does, does that make states. it? Uh, does that make it more difficult when it comes to sort of nationalism? You know, of all the different, uh, you know, you have different all these different languages and, and scripts and things like that of India. But certainly, certainly. Yeah. Sometimes communication is a really big pain. For example, if I were to go to the south of India, uh, as long as you're in metropolitan cities, it's not going to affect you because everyone is going to be talking English and Hindi in pretty much all the metropolitan cities. But as you go interior into a state, it becomes really more difficult if you don't know the state language. So. And if you're talking in terms of Bombay, Bombay is a highly diverse place. So you're going to find everyone of every different language samples in Bombay. So you will have the sampling of everything in Bombay. So it's a really fun and a cultural place to pick up different kind of languages and pick up uh, basic phrases. So There's a lot of diversity. Yes. I, I guess one of the questions I had about this is uh, I speak a, a little bit of Spanish, uh, but that's about it. Us Americans, we speak, you know, American English. That's the way it goes. Uh, as I'm sure you know, but do you ever get confused? You know, you're speaking one dialect of something, and then you perhaps substitute a word in for another language, and oh, you, of course, you blend them together. It, it, it always happens. Always happens. Um, so in Bombay, as I said, because there's a lot of diversity, and I, if I'm with a group of five friends, probably all of us talk a different language. So when we are talking, uh, there becomes a lot of slang that comes into picture. I wouldn't say we get confused, but a lot of slang kind of gets accepted into the terminology. So it always happens is even while I'm talking Hindi, my Hindi is very different because there's a lot of slang involved. So the Hindi, what people from Bombay talk is really different from what I would talk to somebody from, say, Delhi. Because, well, 
since Bombay is a lot more diverse, we have a lot more different words, how we get confused, and you have a lot more slang that's incorporated. So yeah, I mean, that's definitely there.